Hello? Yes, Catherine. This is not the right time. You know what work. You're pulling this out of nowhere. Listen, you're the only woman in my life, period. Yeah, Catherine? What? No, you're not. And where are you going to go with them? No, they're my kids too. Listen. You're going to... Listen. Calm down, calm down. Yes, yes, listen. I've, I've been putting in extra shifts for to pay off the mortgage. You know this, honey. And everything I do, I do it for you, Jaden and Paris. Period. Yes, because I... I no, no! You, what, 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 what? You're going to do what? <laughs> Catherine? Hello? setting the pace on this, eh? Paradise, I'm hearing. Yeah, I think someone like you deserves it. Oh, really? Congratulations. Let's hope it's long-lived. I'm impressed, really, how someone like you managed to sweeten up the senior officers and get through all that paperwork. After all, it's only two prisoners from one side of the jail to meet up with a female on the other side. I'm sure you'll manage, not saying though. Quite a lot could go wrong. They'll be all right. Oh yeah, you got it all worked out, don't you? You really think that when they leave here, they go to do good? Well, your magic seems to have worked on this guy on the outside. So, let's see what he has to say, shall we? Mr. Lynch, hand me that letter. <laughs> Dear Mr. Ndongu, you once said only by freeing spirit and mind do we find who we were and who we will be. I'm on that journey. Not too many people believed in me other than you, and that means a lot to me. Didn't know it would be that hard to readjust, but after 10 years, what else could I expect? Discovering new sides to me every day. I started painting. Helped me to keep balance. I do it pretty much all day and night if I'm not job hunting. Most jobs I apply to don't even invite me for an interview once they read I'm an ex-convicted drug dealer. When I get angry and impatient, I remember God. He knows what's best for me. I've learned to put my trust in him. Give me some me. Go on then. I have met a girl. Yeah. Her name is Iwa. She studies art and poetry. She is very inspirational. <coughs> she wants. Oh, okay. She wants to get me an agent and set up a website for me to promote my paintings and poetry. Yeah. But I'm taking it really slow, just getting used to everything. Things still the same in my bar, drugs yeah. and violence. You know the whole story. Still trying to find the right moment to tell my boy that the new me is not with it anymore. I'm a new man now. It's a responsibility that I carry out with constant contemplation. And so, every day that God blesses me with, I set myself free a little more each day. Free from guns, prison, free from fear. You told me to look inside myself when things get hard and to keep on fighting. That's what I will do. 
Iwa makes me write at least one poem a day. She likes all of them. Don't always agree with her, to be honest, but I like this one. And I dedicate it to you. <laughs> Title, Opportunity. Life is an opportunity. Elevation, its sweetest sherry, education. Something we all deserve. Humanity, what a sacred nation. They say the universe is vacant, but the almighty creator never falls short of an inch. The things people are prepared to do to win has left me for time without a grin. Then, how do you tell a playful child life isn't fun? Tell the ministries to pray for our kids, make it to 21, cause the very people we vote for are employing officers to take our precious children's lives with a gun. Interconnected, some refuse, and some can't see, like grass can't see the top of the branches of a Christmas tree. And the only question then remains is, to be or not to be? Sudden, strengthened, stronger, smarter, faster in pursuing our eternal happiness and destinies. Young black and gilded seems like I'm the perfect recipe for the boys in badges to be arresting me, system stressing me. Well, they want to bring us to their state of being stuck, but the creator is fair. So, we are in luck, luck, and luck. But, tell that to this generation, because they're down for anything and they don't give a duck. Marvellous. Really brilliant. I guess we're all a bit of a Shakespeare nowadays. Still, that's only poetic justice, isn't it? No. I'll tell you what this is. This is a bunch of criminals that you are trying to set free to terrorise our streets. Oh. Yeah. So they're now terrorists. Mr Lynch, please tell me, why do you do this job? To keep folks in jail. They deserve a chance, just like anybody else. Chance? To do what? To find purpose, happiness, security, and away from all the guns. Look, mate, you need to wise up. But it's your, not your fault. It's your office. Oh. And, um... What is my office going to do with it? Well, the difference is, I get to watch over these monkeys while you entertain them with story time and biscuits. They're not like us. They're different. They think different, act different. And there comes you, nice middle class home. The degree, nice degree, bit of research on the net. Yeah, you really know what it's like to live in these estates, don't you, with the gangs, drugs and murders. Yeah, these are criminals, okay? So what are you? Bob the Builder? Yeah, <laughs> 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 uh, For your information, oh, yeah. when we first came from Africa, we live in the council housing estates in Brixton. Single mother, four children, yeah. three jobs, yeah, three. And food banks was nothing unfamiliar to us either. Junkies could, we were fixing their needles um, outside and we couldn't even go outside. The money the gang dealers were, were making caused a lot of tough wars. Knives, guns, killings were a regular occurrence. So don't you dare tell me I don't understand. Well, I know what circumstances these young adults who oh, come yeah. in this living, their decisions may not have been right, but I know deep down inside they're good and talented individuals. Oh yeah? Yeah. Sure. So, what are you going to do anyway? Hey, eh? What are you going to do? Mr. Lynch, if I was you, I would think more careful 
about what you said to me. I'm being very close about doing your job before you lose it. <laughs> My job is to keep hugs like these in jail. At least one of us is doing the right thing. Anyway, whom do we have today? Brandon, Manslaughter and Attempted GBH, Caroline, Murder, Reduced to Manslaughter, Oh, yes. You must be Caroline, right? Hey, you, speak when you're spoken to. You hear me? Mr. Lynch, I'll take you from here. Thank you. You must be Caroline, right? <clears throat> Have a seat. I'm Mr. No. Please, sit down. Sit down. So what do you want from me? Oh. So did no one tell you? Anyway, you've been recommended for early release. Yeah, right. I don't think you've read my record. Mm. Well, you come to these meetings for two years, and um, at the end of the program, I make a report. You sit in front of the probation panel. If you keep your record and behavior good, and clean, both at the station and on your work. Well, I see no reason why you'll be denied a chance of early release of parole. So my future is in your hands? No, it is in yours, and it has already, or, or, or been yours. Me, I'm just here as a, <coughs> a guide and reporter. Sounds more like you do. No, I don't. I said that you set the pace, I make the report, and there is something else you need to understand if you're going to be part of this program. What's that? This is a mixed program, and there will be two other male inmates from the other side of prison. Who are they? All in good time. All in good time. I want to know who they are before I do anything. Okay. Well, if you agree to give it a go, there will always be a member of staff present in the station. Me and Mr. Lynch seated outside. But there is something else you need to understand about this program. This, uh, this program, of course, is being offered to these guys because we believe they have the right mindset, just like you. And I don't think, or we don't think, that they will do anything to jeopardize their chance of early release. And what if I said no? Then it ends here. How is that a choice? Well, it's more of a choice than the <coughs> one you had before. All right, when do we start? Oh, right away. All I need to do is to go and file off these papers and um, we can get going. Mr. Lynch, <laughs> can you keep an eye on Caroline for yes. a little bit? And, um, I won't be long. Okay. I'll be back. <clears throat> Funny, isn't it? All that worry about you being on your own with two males. Don't worry, you'll be quite safe. But you're the murderer, aren't you? It was reduced to manslaughter for your information. Oh, yes, so it was. But you did kill someone. And now you want early release, after just four years. I don't think so. If you ask me, this program's a waste of time. They'll build you up and knock you back down again. It's better than nothing. Your mind, Mike, should face reality. Maybe uh, make yourself a little bit comfortable on the inside. I could help there. I've got a lot of influence here. I could get you nice things, shampoo, cosmetics. 
Something to protect yourself. Drugs. You'd have protection. I'd look after you. No one would bother you. And you'd have a little bit of money saved up for when you leave. Hmm? What do you think? Of course, I might need to have to take my cut. And I might need something extra to keep me sweet. What do you think a pretty little thing like you could do to keep me sweet? <laughs> okay, I think I've got it all signed up. Um, okay, now we get the going. Is everything okay? I'm fine. Okay. If you're really okay, uh, I'll ask Mr. Lynch, can you go and collect uh, Brandon and Michael? Yep. And then we can start. Okay. <coughs> Don't mind him. He's just another man. gang-related crimes. You have been picked because we believe you have what it takes to leave all your criminal life and gang behind. And that's why you're here. So what can you do for me, huh? Well, first of all, we're going to talk about your experience. But as a team, we're going to work together to put it all behind you for good. All right? What? What, what was it? Come on, have a look. I don't do boys. Oh, I ain't got nothing against lesbians. I ain't lesbian. I prefer men. Settle down, settle down, please. <coughs> Can't we do this one to one? No, we do it as a team because you all have something to share from each other. Mr. Nandongo, don't you think I'm pretty? <laughs> Listen, I don't think it's appropriate for me to comment. Look, but there won't be any one-to-one station. Right? And, uh, but I believe all of you, I'm sure we, we can all work through it together. Sir, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> what, would you say, what would you say if I was? I'd say not to one to one session still. Why? Because God made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, innit? Wait, who decides which rules can and cannot be broken? You're as much a sinner in Godly than any other fan? No, all I did is sell drugs. That's different. Well, considering people's point of view is very important, and that's why I believe by the end of the program, you value each other and others differently. He is in the same messed up situation as I am. What on earth could I learn from him? He has nothing I could value. Hold on. What do you have that man ain't already had? Oh, please. What is that supposed to mean? Maybe you have something to, to share with one another. Um, for example, how you like to be spoken to. What's the point? Well, why don't we start uh, of how it makes you feel? Why? He thinks it's original, but I hear it all the time. It's like dogs barking. <laughs> Maybe if you dress properly, the man might respect you. So how should a woman supposed to dress according to you? Well, modest how Allah has ordained it in religion, isn't it? These are prison clothes, mate. I know guys like you, you have no respect. Women deserve respect, but they have to earn it. 
earn it from who? You? Who made you the judge? Yeah, but do you deserve respect though? What? Yeah, every human deserves respect. But why should man respect you if you don't respect yourself? Who said I don't respect myself? Not that you treat me any different. Guys treat women like shit. What makes you say that? My dad. He used to walk all over my mom. He used her. Treated her like a hoe. Cheated on her. But my mom never on him. So he didn't respect her. On top, he humiliated her in front of family, friends. Even the neighbors knew what was going on. So how did that affect you? She tried to hide it from me, but in the end, she couldn't handle it anymore. On a Friday evening, she locked herself in a in a garden shed with a bottle of vodka and a bottle of pills. She, she was alive when we found her, but she died in the ambulance. I'm sorry to hear that. So, what happened to you? I stayed with my dad. He met a girl at the funeral. She moved in about two weeks later. Pretty soon he started treating her the same way. Well, did she leave him? Yeah. When I turned 15, he, he was always pissed off. He used to ignore me when she was around. I tried to stay out of his way. But then, it was too late. She left him and... She, he looked at my body and he told me how grown up I looked. How pretty I was. He, he got home drunk one day and tried to get in my way. I was afraid I'd be next, so I, I ran away. Your dad is a madman. Tell us about your dad if he's so great. Hmm, Michael. Yeah, please, tell us about your dad. My dad, why? Because I'm curious. I never knew him. He was killed in prison by his rivals. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Who are they? Crips. Crips? Yeah, I was two years old when it happened. Around the same time, my mum overdosed from heroin. What happened? My dad used to be a gang member for the Bloods. I don't know if I should be proud of what he represented, but 400 years of slavery, violence and suppression that black people suffered for their mere skin colour. None of the African culture that we once had was really left. So Crip blood and Pyro became the new African culture. So is that why your, your dad joined the, the culture? Because he was joined the gang because it was part of his culture? Nah, America forced it to be his culture. Okay, so what happened next? <coughs> okay, so you, let's rest for that. So Brandon, can you tell me about you? What? What about me? Tell us about your father. No, I don't want to talk about it. Brandon, you know why we're here. Caroline and Mike have managed to open up, and I believe you can do too. But I'm not them, innit? What do you mean, bro? What makes you so fucking special? A minute ago, you had so much ego. Where's it all gone? Bandit! What? You guys think you're the victim? Hey, why do you, why do you keep paying the victim? You guys thought that you're the only ones going for shit. Day in and day out! Stop it! Alright. Okay. Let's take it slow. Maybe we can start talk about you. Something about yourself. Tell us about yourself. Alright. My sister, she got rushed into the hospital. She had stomach pains. And it turned out she was pregnant. And my dad did a runner, so you know what happened. Bro, that's messed up. That's disgusting. So, what did your father no, do? No, it wasn't my dad. Are you mad? It was my, it was, it was, it was my, it was my neighbor, and he was supposed to be my boy. And I didn't notice anything. What did you notice? Everything, but, but, but for nine months, you know, she for nine months she was ashamed, you know. She, 
she, she thought that he convinced her that if she told anyone, no one would believe or love her again. And at the time, my parents had day jobs, and I was out during most of the day. She would come home from school, and he would abuse her. Every day. I've never seen my dad cry like that. It will be alright, Brandon. It will be fine. It won't be okay! It will never be okay! You ruined my family! It will never be okay! Do you understand that? I didn't say this would be easy, oh. but I know all of you, you can pull out of this and we can literally change our lives for good. Look, my dad, he went, I knew it wasn't, I knew it wasn't meant, I knew there was going to be trouble that day. He didn't want any of us to follow him, that wasn't like him. I had to take a bus home, there were sirens everywhere. So. What happened? He stabbed, he, st he stabbed him 20 times. Just... Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. I'm so sorry. Yeah, me too. So, what happened to your sister and the baby? Something went wrong. There was a miscarriage in it, and obviously, someone had to take her up north. I haven't seen her since. And my dad, he went in prison for. 15 years, obviously he got caught because it was kind of obvious. And then uh, my mum got sectioned and I got put in care, so yeah. I used to get so mad when she'd come into my room. I wish you could do that right now. I'm sorry to hear that, bro. Yeah. Well, listen. I think it's going to be easy, as I say. But I know all of you are strong enough to pull out of this and really change for good. So, um, so what happened after your dad died? Let's come back to you, Mike. I lived with my grandparents. And then my granddad passed when some fools were trying to rub a shop. You see, in South Central LA, everyone is strapped, even the shopkeepers. So when some dickheads came, came to rob the shop that my granddad was in, they tried to escape, but my granddad was in the wrong place at the wrong time. So the shopkeeper let it off on them, but one of them ran into my granddad, and my granddad, he got in the way and fell over and hit his on the floor. He was in a coma for two days, then passed. A year later, my grandma passed too. Was there not anyone you could talk to? Nah. My grandma was a strong woman though, and the main thing she taught me was to be strong and to put my trust in God. Okay. So who did you stay with after your nan passed? I moved to the UK to live with my, with my mum's sister and her two kids. Did you find it difficult to move from Los Angeles to, to London? Yeah, the weather in it. <laughs> She didn't have much money, but she was there for my life, so it was kind of calm. Okay. Thank you for sharing. How about you, Caroline? Where did you go when, uh, when you left? I slept rough at first, hiding in the back of buses. I call it sports hall, top floor of blocks. Then I met Samantha. She was homeless too. Who is Samantha? My girl, my everything. Her stepdad, he used to abuse her. She told her mom and got kicked out. She was sleeping on the streets. From there she got kidnapped by a prostitution ring and they shipped her to Bristol. They were selling her for money and they didn't allow her out and they forced her to take drugs. At first I didn't really think we would click, but because she, she was out of it all the time. But then I didn't really have anywhere to go, so, you know, I was just rolling with her. She, she invited me to a party in Brixton Squad, but she was staying with some punks, so I, I decided to stay with them because I had nowhere else to go. So how was that? 
was all I had at the time. They were good people. They didn't really think, they didn't really care what people thought of that, about them. There's always lots of alcohol and drugs going around. So I got wasted most of the time. It helped me forget about my mom. What kind of drugs? Crack, cocaine, ecstasy, everything. Then I started chasing the dragon. Heroin? Hmm. Is that how you got involved in the uh, gang culture? Led to it. Samantha introduced me to a dealer who then introduced me to his boss, Green Rose, Billy Green Rose. He handled most of South London heroin market. I worked for him. It was strange getting to see and speak to him directly. He always used to call me his new star. Gave me as much gear as I could handle. All I had to do was count money and find guys for him. and pretty soon I, I depended on him. One night, we were at his place. He turned nasty. He had some mates around. He raped me and, and passed me around his friends. <laughs> it was hell, so I took an overdose. Self-respect, right? What? What? Enough! Enough! Cut it! Brandon! Let go of Caroline. Caroline, take your seat. Now. You're lucky when on the outside. I said now! Some guys abuse you. Some guys abuse you physically and some... Some judge you. But it's all the same thing, really. Only I judge me. Good, we judge you. Then I have nothing to worry about. Have you ever met a good man? Yes. Who is he? Simon. He took me home. He took me to the, <coughs> took me to the hospital when I was overdosed. He saved my life. So, you became friends? Not too later. What happened then? When I was in the hospital, I heard that Samantha died. I'm sorry to hear that. Shao. She was... She was walking with a dealer from outside our end. Some guy drove his car into them. The, the dealer saw it coming and managed to jump out of the way, but... She was too slow. Wait, where was this? South Beckham. Wait, who is the dealer? A guy called CJ. Wait, do you know him? Do you know him? Alright, alright. We'll come to that in a minute. I want to hear the rest of Caroline's story. Please carry on. There was a, there was a guy called Paul. He liked me. He was fit. He had money, drugs. I was rolling with him. One night, he got stabbed. He got into a fight. He was bleeding badly, so I was going to call the ambulance. He stopped me. He told me that his brother was a paramedic and I should call him instead. His brother was Simon. Oh, is that the nice guy who called the ambulance when you were doors? Yes. Okay. He, 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 took us, he took us home and fixed Paul up. He was a kind person. He didn't deserve it. Talk to me, you know, see I'm sorry. So what happened? Paul, Paul owed CJ money. I was on my own in the flat when CJ and two mates came around to collect. When I answered the door, they forced their way in and searched the place for cash and drugs. They didn't find anything. So they took me. They kept me there for two days. On the second day, 
CJ said he'd let us off if I did something for him. He didn't wait for an answer. He took what he wanted and laughed and said, I shouldn't believe everything I hear. How did you get out? Paul, the next day, Paul, Paul paid CJ to let me out. I told Paul, I told Paul what happened and he slapped me, he called me a hoe, that it was my fault that he lost the money to release me and that he would deal with CJ. Next thing, Simon comes home from uni. I told him what happened and I cried. He held me and told me it was going to be okay. It was beautiful. He took me to my bed and I didn't want to let go, so he stayed. He was so gentle. Later we were talking about leaving, getting out of town, getting away from Paul, but it was too late. It was too late. Paul came back, saw us in bed together, and when he saw me cheating on him with Simon, his own brother, he went mental. I remember the next thing he did was push Simon to the floor and started to beat the shit out of him. I didn't really know what to do because all I saw was blood and Simon crying for help, but I just, I just picked up the heaviest thing I could find. It was a stone Buddha. And I hit him, I hit Paul, at the back of his head as hard as I could. I got nine years, murder. They changed it to manslaughter. But Simon died. Okay, now talk to me. Do you know CJ? <laughs> he knew my cousin. So you know him too, right? I used to. Was he your mate? I stopped food for him. Did you know about me? Was you there? Answer my question! Was you there? No, nah, I wasn't there, but yeah, I knew about you and I knew about Paul. What am I doing here? How did you meet him? When I moved in with my aunt, I was at college and I didn't have a job and my aunt didn't have much money. My cousin Trev, he was always balling. He was an older of the East Side Black Stones. He was one of the top dons in the ends. CJ used to sell cracking heroin for Trev, but I knew he did his own thing too, innit? My ex Claire was a posh English girl, pretty snark college. And her friends used to always hit the piss because my clothes were kind of shit. <laughs> And I didn't have much money. So that's when I asked CJ to put me on without Trev knowing. It was nice having money, nice clothes. And people treated me like a man, not a boy. Respect and credibility is all you have on the streets, so. isn't it? So what about CJ? CJ was known for being a dangerous guy, and he used to boast about it. Like when he came up to you. He's always doing jobs for the top dons in the end. Collecting money, beating people up. I knew I should have stopped working for him when this youth from the other side got caught walking through our state. And CJ pulled him into an alleyway near the block and I asked him what he was going to do, but he just told me to leave. He said he couldn't catch that shit, meaning he caught him dealing with our tough. Mm -hmm. I could see him crying for help, so I ran. You didn't help him though, did you? What am I? Fucking Superman! His name was Keith. Who? The kid! How did you know? He was one of ours. He used to put, he used to put in work for us, man, the blocks. Your boy who calls himself a G, but a 12 year old in fucking hospital! You sent a 12 year old boy to do your dirty work. What did you expect? You both, are, you both aren't gangsters, you're, you're pranksters. Bruv, look, I'm not banging anymore. If you try to rush me here, there's nothing I can do about it. If that were the case, then I would have just stayed in my cell. <clears throat> I ain't here for that. Back like then, I was naive, but I never put my hands on anyone, especially not a 12 year old boy. You still worked for him though, didn't you? Guys like you only give a shit about money. Nah, not anymore, still. Waiting for you, for you to come back and work for him again, is he? No. And you expect us to believe you? So I was there when it ended. What happened? We were at CJ's place counting some cash. And then CJ handed me 600 pounds and told me to look after it. 
We then left the flat, but as we're walking up the road, a car pulls up behind us. The guy gets out and stabs CJ in the back. It was Paul. You fucking dickhead of a boyfriend! Kill my boy! All right. Now what? All right, let's take a breath. Let's take a breath. These are unexpected and heavy things we are talking about today. But I believe and I trust all of you, we can go over this. We can do it. Caroline, do you want us to stop for them? No, I, I, I want to do the rest. All right. Carry on, Michael. <coughs> Paul didn't try with me, but I saw it all happen. What did you see? Everything, can it? How he done it? Twice in the back, three times in the stomach, and once in the chest. And then he just looked at me, got into his car, and ran. I held him until I heard the ambulance siren, and then I just started teching. I got on the train straight to South End, and I booked, booked myself a room in a hotel. And then when I got there, I called Trev. I knew he'd go fucking mental, but I knew it'd be worse if I didn't tell him. He then came off and gave me a proper beating, but I kind of deserved it. Anyway. Why would you say that? Because he was the one in the first place who told me not to get involved, but I was the one who went behind his back and betrayed him. Right. You couldn't speak to your auntie about it? Nah, the only person I could talk to was my girl. And then her parents found out about us. She was pregnant. Wow, congratulations. So you have a boy or a daughter? For what? Nah, they fucking bowled out and sent her to live in New York with some family. And then she called me up telling me it was all over. She had an abortion. How did that make you feel? <coughs> Empty. Still can't understand and forget it. I continued shopping for Trev. But with everything that was on my mind, I just couldn't focus on anything else. I couldn't eat and I couldn't sleep and I kept on making silly mistakes. And then I got Nick trying to send a kilo of brown on, on commission to an undercover fed, and I got nine years. <coughs> I handle my own if I have to. When I was on the streets banging, I never shot up, beat up, and stabbed up no one. <coughs> so don't ever try pointing things at me for other people's fucking moves. Am I a dickhead? The guy on the inside told me that if I was truly sorry, then Allah would forgive me. So ever since, I pray five times for forgiveness, thanking a lot for both my life and my freedom. <laughs> you are in prison, mate. Islam sets you free in the heart, mind, and soul. Ooh. I'm glad you find guidance in religion. So tell me, how has Islam helped you? To hold myself and stay on the right path, but I've still got a lot to learn, though, but, you know, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Thank you for opening up. Well, I think we're going to make a faster progress with you than I thought. So come back to you, Brandon. Kid. Can Hello. you tell us about Kid? What happened? Well, it was one of our youngers, isn't it? He used to drop food for us. What, do you know the whole story is that? Please. That's what we're here for. Uh, give me a minute. Um, ask you. you know I went to care, right? Mm -hmm. So I was close to this guy for Neil. <coughs> he used to shop food. He had everything that I one. You know, girls, money, nice clothes, this and that. Everything. Anyway, so I bought some food to sell, you know, got some weed. <coughs> I didn't really know what to do with it, if I'm honest. But I went up to some of them, you know, some of the mandem, started selling, and some of them started coming back for more. I started making a little bit of money. Until one day your boy. Who you see it? Yeah, that's him. Gets him gets up in my face. Says I need to join his group or stop shot him. See the thing is, that's not my style. And I was making way more money on my own. And I, I certainly wasn't gonna pay for protection money. I mean when you're on the road, like fear is the last thing on your mind. Anyway, so after that, me and my G's. <clears throat> we made a little crew of our own in South London, yeah? Everything was okay until we started dealing brown. And then CJ sent a little warning to keep for us. And then you know what happened, right? <clears throat> See, my guns, 
We keep it 100. We have a code, but your G's know nothing about that. Your boy who calls himself a G put his hands on a 12 year old. They were talking about three broken ribs, a fractured eye socket, and permanent brain damage. Fuck. <sighs> anyway. So you know you know the keepers, yeah? After that, I don't know, like. I saw CJ about a week later after that. I was driving. He was just walking around with some girl and I guess I was pissed off because I just saw Red and drove straight at him. I go away though. What? It was you? You killed Samantha? I'll fucking kill you. Mr. Leach! I'm sorry, um... <clears throat> Why the fuck did you bring me here? Caroline, calm yourself down. Fuck you! Look, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to... Sorry, and that's all better now, is it? No, obviously not. Caroline, look at me. Calm, is you need to calm yourself down. Is your sorry going to bring Sam back? No. You need to calm yourself down, now. Calm yourself down. What are you doing, you told now? Mr. Lynch, thank you. Everything is under control. Okay? Under control? Yes, Are Caroline. you from another planet? Now, you two, sit down back in your chairs, now. Mr. Lynch, that isn't helping. Well, I'll just go then, will I? Let you look after these monkeys. Yes? I don't think so. Look, settle down, everyone. Sessions like these are always emotional. We are not talking about the weather here, are we? Listen, I trust three of you. You can work together and we can deal with this. Having said that, I think right now is the best time to have a break. Um, Michael, Brandon, if you can go with Mr. Lynch, just in the toilet while I have a moment with Caroline. Okay? Okay, put your hands down. Thank you. Sit down, sit up, put your hands down. Uh, is that really necessary? Yeah, help with safety, mate. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your help. Um, I do really appreciate it. connection between the three of you, which I thought could be of some help. Help? How does it help? I thought you were trying to help us move on, but you've just brought me back to the same place I wanted to leave behind. Listen, for you to move on, you need to confront your past. Right now, you're trying to carry, carry it with you, and at the same time, trying to run away from it. I want to give you an opportunity so that you can deal with it face to face. <coughs> and walk away from it for good and with confidence. I lost my friend though, she's gone because of him. I know, I know. It's not easy, but it will happen. Listen, talk about Brandon. Do you see how it was, how he was? He's just realized that Samantha was somebody. And all the things that he did really affected someone else. These guys are really learning hard lessons. And actually, right now, I believe it's the first time that he has ever said sorry for such a long time. And I believe he meant it too. Sorry, sorry what brings that back, you know? I know, but do you think he understands that? No. Do you think if he could, he would? He can't, though. Hmm. What about uh, Keith? The boy who got beaten up. How do you think Brandon feels getting him, get him into that situation? How do 
I know. I don't know. Come on. Come on, you can see his breathing, right? I guess so. These guys, both of them, they are learning hard lessons. And they've got a lot to deal with before they can move on. Look at my Michael. And all the stuff that CJ did. Right? He's, right now he just realized that it was a mistake. And CJ didn't win either. These guys are facing challenges, tough moments, but they can go through it. But at least they're learning hard lessons. But, but why do we have to why do we have to do it together though? I don't want to do it with them. Listen. You guys have an opportunity to work together and change your lives for good in a way that no one else can. When you go out in the real world, you're going to, you're going to need to face all these challenges. You're going to need to keep your cool and your focus. I'm here to help you and test you. If you do it, if you do it well, you leave this place and everything behind. It's your choice. It's a hard lesson, but I believe you can all do it. All right, ladies. One at a time. Don't forget to wash your hands. Uh, who's first? your shoes if I were you, bruv. But you're not a 12-year-old kid like that. You're better off inside than on the outside. I didn't beat him up. I doubt if he sees it like that. No. He's going to wait his opportunity <coughs> and then he might strike. I've seen it before. Bang! He's going to strike. And what am I supposed to do about it? I don't know. Well, I reckon he's going to be tooled up. Why are you searching then? No point. You keep it hidden. Wait his opportunity. Best to get your own tools. Yeah, and where am I supposed <laughs> to get tools from in here? You're lucky you met me. Okay? Here. Take this. Put it away. Keep it hidden, right? And if you need backup, and I reckon you will, I'm a good person to know. But I need information, right? love at first sight. Or perhaps it was because you tried to kill his boss and you're in rival gangs. Maybe, but he said it's possible that. Yeah. He joined Jihad. He's got Allah on his side. That's a very peaceful mob. You want my advice? That's one gang you don't want to be mixed to mess with, okay? You need to ask yourself, who is going to help me out? Who's going to support me? Who's going to be on my side? Okay? Now, shouldn't do this, but you are different. You've got something different about you from the rest of these monkeys. Wait, so take what? this <laughs> and put it away. What? Now what are you pussy? What? No, it's okay. okay. I'll keep an eye on you. All right? Put it away. All right. Let's get you back to your social club. have invited these two if I knew that they couldn't do this. Same goes for you. You all can do it. Um, and I don't think they ever intended to hurt anyone else any more than you did. Things just got out of control. 
But listen, you can all you can all help one another if you agree to work with them, change their lives, change their lives, as well as your own. Will you agree to give it a go? What if it kicks off? Well, then you have me and Mr. Lynch to look after you. Mr. Lynch, hmm. he doesn't care. Well, then you have me. Yeah, come in. Special delivery. When you wanna. Oh, okay. Um uh, right. Yes. I'd uh, promise them to bring them some refreshments. So I think uh, if you uncuff them then um Well uh, refreshments from outside? Yes. Can't do it, mate. Health and safety. Come on there with me. Yeah, and if anything happens, it's my job on the line. Right. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So we, 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 it's, it's okay. Uh, do you want anything to eat, Caroline? Yeah. Are we okay? All right. Come on, lads. Let's just take a seat. about what I offered you? No? You're a very pretty girl, you know. I reckon we'd make a good team. You on the inside, selling merchandise for me, and me giving a bit of what you've been missing, injecting a bit of passion back into your life. Yeah? I'll give you a little injection now if you want. Are you turning me down, darling? You do know what's going to happen when they come back, don't you? I'm going to take their cuffs off, yeah? And then they're going to get paranoid. There'll be a fight. Because they'll be like dogs with knives. Oh, yes. I changed the files on this one. Didn't you know? They're both tooled up. Yeah. These are criminals. Always a gang. Once in a gang, always in a gang. Can't solve that. Don't think that this bright future crap is anything to do with that. Okay? But here, this is my end. Right? I think it's going to get very messy here. But when it's over, I'm going to have to make a report. The question is, what am I going to say about you? Did you do as you told? Did you get the, do the things I asked you? Or did you bank on your... New boyfriends. Watch gamble. Watch the wheel go. Place your bets, watch the wheel go round. Eh? Yeah? Now, why don't you just kneel down in front of me and show me what a good girl you are? Don't worry, the doors are locked. No one's going to come in. Please, I just want to do my time. Look. When this is over, you're going to need someone in, 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 in here, all right? And I could be that person. Now do as I say! Right. Keep this button, okay? Because no one's going to believe you over me, all right? I would appreciate it if you make your suggestions at a more appropriate time. Okay? All right, let's move on. Uh, yeah. Uh, you guys have something more to share? Anything to say? Come on, guys. We've made so much progress this evening. Okay? We need to strike when the iron is still hot. 
I know it's upsetting and it's difficult to deal with, but we can get through this, and that's why we're here. Is somebody has got something to say, Michael, got something to say to share with us? What's wrong with you, bro? Nothing, bro. What's wrong with you? You tell me, bro. What's going on? I don't know, fam. Ask you... him. Look at me. I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't. I can't. Let me out of here. Please, let me out of here. I don't want to be here. Please, I don't want to be here. Please, let me you, out. You, Karel, go back to what's the matter? Sit down now. Mr. Oh, Lynch, oh. not now. Oh, huh? What's the matter? Everything was fine. What's going on? I've changed my mind. I want to go. I want to go back to myself. Please. Caroline, you need to calm yourself down now. So make a move, bro. Hey, no, you, sit no. down now. Please don't do this. Mike! No. Stop! No, Brandon. no, I'm killing! Stop! Brandon! Listen, listen! Stop! Give me the knife! Give me the knife! Listen, your life matters so much, right? And it's, there's no point of wasting your life this. Please, give me the knife. Now. What are you doing? You can't trap him! Mr. Lynch, shut up. <laughs> give me the knife. Now. Now thanks for Keith. Brandon, I won't repeat myself. Please, give uh. me the knife. Give me the knife. Calm yourself down. Give me the knife. Give me the knife. <laughs> now, look, listen. Your lives matter so much. You may not realize it, but it's never too late. Listen, don't. All right. Listen, I don't want you to be prisoners all throughout your lives. And I don't mean prisoners here. I mean prisoners of fear and violence. Now, the man you see in front of you is the man in pain. The man who has suffered just like you. And he has had enough. Look, I apologize. I guess I got paranoid when Mr. Lynch handed me my knife. Wait, what? Mr. What? Lynch gave me my knife too. He said you wanted to ride up the key. Ah! <laughs> I fucking hate you. Think yourself so fucking special. Telling people how to live their fucking lives. Well, I'll tell you what's gonna happen here. I have a plan. You're gonna die. Oh yeah, I'm gonna slit your throat. Back off! Back the fuck off! You wanna see the light of day again? Do you think they're going to believe you over me when I do my report? Okay, I have a plan. Ha <laughs> ha! Take this! I'm a genius! There was a knife fight between Brandon and Michael. Mr. Ndongo here got cut in the process. I tried to intervene, <coughs> but I was too late. Bam! Shakala, baby! Because here, this is my end, okay? I rule. What about me? If you do as you're told, and be a good girl, you get off on this one. Let me do it. Do what? Let me finish him, honey. I don't uh -huh. want to get Finally, you Finally, eh? Finally. Wait, what the fuck? What, what's this now? Bunny and cat, you little snake? Shut up, you bastard. Can't you see I'm having a conversation with my new fiance here? <laughs> no, I'll tell you what's gonna happen. Alright? My new killer wife here is the same gonna take over my this my little friend here. Okay? And don't you move. Otherwise it'll be slow and painful. Hold oh, still. <coughs> oh, come on. Kevin, what about the point your hand? What we share? Caroline, give me the knife. 
Don't do this. Okay. Give me the knife now. Go. Oh. <laughs> okay. You won. They're good kids. Oh yeah. Everybody deserves a chance. Everybody deserves one, yes. Yeah. Mr. Ndongo, pass me the knife. Let me kill it. No. Go. Shut up. Shut up. And I will not give it to you. Listen. Mr. Lynch, this has to be reported. And you know the consequences. And they don't because they're ethnic minors. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is my country. This is England. My grandfather fought in the war for this country. My father, too. And what has any of you ethnic minors done, or your fucking families done, for my country? Insects, that's what you are, all over the place. <coughs> Trying to take our jobs. Oh, yeah. I see what this is. Me gone. That's another job for one of you ethnic miners. Now fuck you, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> not, it's not going to happen. Not on my watch. Not in my England. Mr. Lynch, if you let me call for assistance, you get off with a dismissal. It's up to you. What about my chance? My chance? Well, this is your chance, and you have to take it now. No. I'm the victim here, me. Well, just stab him. Did Enough. You... <laughs> Is this what it's come to, Mr. Ndongo? Huh? Everybody de deserves a chance for freedom. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> silence and patience. Um, I just wanted to ask you guys for a round of applause for Benoit Champs, who is the writer and he can't be here this evening but we hope we did him we did him good so um, you know it's, if you can give him a round of applause. We would like as well to take a warm appreciation for Global Fusion Music and Arts for putting up together the youth and the adults, and the youth as well, uh, uh, to do this play. Your, your youth as well, yeah. No, I'm the pensioner. You're the pensioner. <laughs> so they've worked so hard, and uh, all the artists have worked so well. Uh, so Global Fusion, thank you, and the whole entire team. Thank you very much.